Welcome back to Silver Bull Channel. Welcome back, Silver Bull fans. Um, I've been looking at a uh, lot of stuff on the internet, and um, obviously uh, I'm a fan of Stellar Concepts, and he explained why he doesn't believe in God. I was watching one on Ricky Gervais, who's a, a big atheist, doesn't believe in God, which is fine. I, I, uh, I believe uh, in freedom, and people can believe what they want but um because i believe in that freedom i also believe i have the freedom to say why i believe in god and uh i think it's um fair that we should all have a uh, be able to justify our beliefs and uh i believe in god because i believe divine intervention has happened in my life on numerous occasions and i'll share that with you some of you will say that's kind of ironic, the fact that I've got a brain tumour at the moment now. Do I believe that's divine intervention? But let me let me tell you my story and um, see where we go from there. When I was very uh, young, um, I actually backed onto a heater and caught on fire, which uh, resulted in 21% um, of my body, my, my back mainly, being burned. Um, anyone who knows about um, medicine 40 years ago would uh, know that the burns of that nature were normally fatal. Okay, You should die. Nowadays they're saving people with that kind of a, a percentage burn and more to their skin, but they put them in special body suits and other, other special things they've uh, learnt over time. But in 40 years ago, that should have been a death sentence. But um, my family prayed for me, my church family prayed for me, and I survived. And uh, to me, that's the first time God had saved my life. And there have been numerous others. I remember another time when I was about 10, I um, was packing. Uh, we were packing to go on a holiday. We had a caravan, so... Um, I grabbed my pillow to make sure I had my pillow <laughs> and was taking it to the caravan. And I grabbed the caravan and boom, uh, I had 240 volts going down my arm and couldn't let go. Um, I was barefoot and the electricity was traveling straight down my arm, straight down my spine and down my uh, legs into the ground and uh, essentially it was going to kill me. Um, I wasn't throwing as it was, like sometimes when you touch an electric fence or that, I was hooked on, I couldn't let go. Uh, physically it's impossible for me to let go, my, the uh, 240 volts going down your arms um, is m more electricity than your nervous system can overcome, so uh, your nervous system also runs on electricity, so theoretically it's impossible for me to let go, and I found I couldn't let go. And um, I was just more or less sitting there dying. And uh, as many of us do <laughs> in, our, in our darkest, deepest moments, like they say, there's no atheist in a foxhole, I cried out simply, God help me. And at that moment, I hit the ground. Um, something released my hand. Um, some people would say, oh, the electricity equalised out and that was just coincidence. You can believe that if you want. Yeah, I'm sure electrical experts will justify it in various ways and means. What I know is the moment I said, God help me, is the moment I hit the ground. Uh, I was released and hit the ground. I believe it was divine intervention. I believe God saved my life that day. We're, you know... Whether he personally, seeing I believe God is everywhere, did it, or whether he sent an angel to uh, do it, I, I, it's irrelevant either way. Uh, his glory goes to God. I remember another time coming back from a church meeting, actually. I don't go to church at the moment, but that's a separate issue. I, I, uh, that's more through my disappointment with churches as an organisation. Um, but as God says, we're two or three gathered. There I will be. Um, anyhow, I was coming back from a, a church meeting 
and um, get to an intersection. This is on a Friday night in New Zealand, and uh, I'm about to start. The light goes green, so you know you start off to go, and the car stalled. And this was one of those old dungers of a car that stalls every five seconds. This was a good car that that, that never stalled. Um, if I recall rightly, it was an automatic, so it's not like I, I dropped the clutch or anything like that. <laughs> it just stalled. And as I was in the process of restarting the car, you know, we're talking seconds here. Um, as I started the car, um, a car came flying through the intersection, um, doing at least 100 k's. Um, and... Uh, Went straight through the red light, and uh, that would have—I presume it was a drunk driver. I can't explain any other reason you'd be driving like a lunatic like that. But he came flying through the um, through the intersection. It didn't take me long to calculate that if the car hadn't stalled, I would have precisely been in the place for him to T-bone me. Um, some of you will say, "Oh, that was lucky, or that was coincidence." Once again, I don't believe it. I believe it was divine intervention. God, who knows what's coming at any time, decided at that time to act in that way. Then stall the car. Um, I've had lots of other occasions. Um, you know, I'm sure you all have occasions where your life has been... Uh, on the line. I've been caught in rips and had been uh, saved from that, thankfully to a surfer. Um, uh, my own mother tells me a story of when she was um, on her honeymoon and uh, she, uh, not a good swimmer, um, not a swimmer at all, <laughs> um, and she was uh, drowning in a uh, swimming pool in uh, Rotorua and uh, this um, Maori guy um, saved her, pulled her out of the water and uh, she turned around to thank him and he disappeared as quick as that. Um, she personally believed it was an angel that saved her. Uh, you probably didn't know him. Uh, Angels look like Marys. But, um, you know, there, there's, I'm sure if you, each of you look into your lives, there's times when your own life has been at risk and saved. Of course, you're going to get people to question, well, how come 100,000 died in a tsunami? And, um, you know, I'm not going to explain the deeper philosophy of stuff like that. All I can say is, in my own life, there have been times when God has reached out and intervened and saved my life. Um, there are other occasions as well, but you know, if those th three or four that I mentioned don't convince you, then probably nothing else I say will convince you, so I, I, I won't go into more details. Um, suffice it to say, I believe God can be uh, individually involved in our lives. At the moment, I have a brain tumour. It may kill me. I don't want it to kill me. I've got children and a wife. Um, plans, like everyone else, I'd love to travel. Um, but I leave that in the hands of God. It's not for me to... Uh, to uh, know what's going to happen with it. I pray that uh, it'll be healed. I'm on drugs at the moment, hoping that they will fix it. Um, but I won't be uh, angry at God if he chooses on this occasion not to save my life. I still thank him for all the other times he's come into my life and uh, made a difference. And uh, it's not just about selfish things like saving one's life. It's about him making one's life better. So I think I've answered to you at least, I'm not 
not on a philosophical view so much, but more on a, a direct sort of view and divine intervention. And um, I'm sure there's lots of examples where people can tell you of where they believe divine intervention has happened in their life or they've seen it on a bigger scale. Um, you know, uh, even some of you have just finished Thanksgiving in America. Um, just even that story alone, and uh, this might annoy some of those who are against uh, the white man coming to uh, North America, but the simple fact of the pilgrims, who were religious people, coming to North America, you know, they come to an area where a, vast, a, a large section of it is empty because of disease. The pop native population has been wiped out. And... Uh, You've, <laughs> disease also killed out large amounts of the white people who first ever set, settled there. Half the people who arrived um, at Plymouth Rock ended up dying the first season. They got some weird disease that they didn't know about. We'll probably never know what it was, but suffice to say, it may have not come from England with it. It may have been a disease that they weren't actually adapted to from North America that killed them. Half of them ended up dead. And if it wasn't for the Indians... Um, they would have starved, and hence Thanksgiving Festival. Um, but not only that, they, they, they arrived in the wrong place, for starters. They were supposed to arrive nearer to Jamestown, yet they arrived further north, well away from where they were supposed to be. Some people say unlucky, others would say divine intervention, because... They land in Plymouth Rock, and what do they find? They find an Indian guy who speaks English. You know, what's the chances of that? Um, you know, some mathematician might be able to work it out, how many Indians at that time in the 1600s actually spoke English, and what were the chances of them actually being in that spot at that time where these people were technically lost. Um, I mean... His ability to speak English and uh, translate for them helped with the relations with the native Indians, which weren't automatically hostile. They actually formed an alliance and looked after one another. Um, not all American history is a history written in blood. Um, so, you know, they believed it was divine intervention, and, you know, I believe it was too. What are the chances of it happening? Um, so, I, I think sometimes, uh, people, God says in the Bible, and I'll get to this in a second, that, uh, he's in control of world's affairs ultimately, and he's ultimately responsible for everything that happens in the universe. I don't believe it was his plan for this world not to be perfect. His plan was for a perfect world. Okay, so... I believe in God, um, so why do I believe that's in Jesus Christ in the Bible? Why am I a Bible-believing Christian? There's lots of people who believe in God, um, Muslims believe in God, you could even say Hindus and Buddhists in a, in a sense believe in a God, they, they more believe in a, uh, a uh, God in everything sort of view. Um, Nirvana and things like that. Um, obviously, there's many different types of Hinduism and Buddhism, and to lump them all into one's a bit arrogant. But um, suffice to say that the, they believe in reincarnation. Um, Christians do not. Um, why do I believe in Jesus Christ? Um, one. I've read the Bible from cover to cover, and to me, it, it's what God would do, a loving God would do, in a sick, sick world. Some people say, oh, God sending his own son to die, what kind of sicko would do that? What kind of sicko sends his son to die? Well, one, the Bible makes it clear that it was Jesus' own choice. He didn't have to die on the cross. It was his voluntary choice to do so. To think of it on a philosophical point of view, God um, 
is the ultimate force in the universe. He created everything, therefore he can destroy everything in a second. And then he could recreate it. No one would be the wiser. Um, except him. So how does a, a person who has the ultimate force, the ability to control everything, in, in a sense, how does he allow free will? How does he shove his love? How does he reconcile a, uh, a world that has gone bad to himself? And he does so by sending the Saviour to take the just penalty upon himself. And that's a fantastic... It's even just a fantastic story. As a story, it's a fantastic story. Um... You know, some of the stories that bring tears to our eyes are stories of where other people lay down their lives to save their friends. You know, even Star Trek. You know, where Spock dies for the rest of the crew. You know, things like that. That story is a very powerful story. Um, some people say, well, it's a fairy tale. That, you know, that's their choice. But uh, I'd say, you know, the power of Jesus dying on the cross transformed the world. Within 400 years, the world was a very different place. Um, slavery was on the way out because Christianity had, had taken hold. Um, <coughs> um, uh, Europe wouldn't have come to dominate uh, the world without having Christianity um, and some of the, the key fundamentals that that brought with it, you know, freedom, freedom of choice. And I'm not talking about Roman Catholicism, don't get me wrong here, Roman Catholicism is uh, one of uh, the world's most evil religions as far as the number of people they've butchered, uh, how they claim papal authority and that. It's not a religion of freedom. And if I offend any Roman Catholics here, oh, I'm sorry. You know, my own uh, sister in is a Roman Catholic. That's her choice. Um, but for me, true Christianity is Bible-believing Christianity. So I believe in Jesus. I believe the Bible is, is the inspired word of God. Not word for word, but, you know, uh, it contains everything you need for salvation. Um, and e even the stories in the Old Testament, um, they're so honest stories, you know, there's stories about where, where there's stories of incest in there, you know, you don't get that in too many other history books. There's stories of, uh, David, the king, how he, uh, uh has a guy, guy killed. Because he's got his wife knocked up. You know, you probably won't come across that in any other ancient literature. <laughs> um, you might get it as a, a, in, a, in Greek myths where, you know, you like have that guy who uh, killed his father and slept with his mother. You get stories like that in Greek myths, but they don't try to tell you it's actual history. Um, whereas. The Old Testament tr tells you it's actual history. This is what happened. And, uh, you know, there, w there was a King David. Anyone who tries to argue there wasn't might as well argue there was no person called Julius Caesar as well. Um, the Kingdom of David is well established in archaeology. Um, so the Bible is written in a way that is more honest than any other history book that you'll come across. It includes both the good people did and the evil. Um, and people say, oh, some of it's very legalistic. It's a law book for the whole nation. For a whole nation it was, for the nation of Israel, which at that time was God's representative. So you had this whole nation and you've got this tiny set of laws, really. Compared to today, you go into, you know, just the traffic codes for a place or your local local ordinances for a local city council and i guarantee you there will be more words and more 
regulations than they had in the Old Testament. You know, so... Whereas, uh, and you want to go into, uh, go and go, go have a look at the US laws currently. You will not be able to read them all, the federal laws. Um, they take up whole buildings full of libraries for laws. That's why the law has become stupid now because there's so many laws people can't possibly know them all and probably every citizen is breaking one law or another whether they realise it or not. Um, it's ridiculous. I'd much prefer to live under the Old Testament laws. It's a lot simpler. At least you know where you stand. Some people say, oh, but they stone people. Well, you know, they had the death penalty for certain things to uh, protect their nation. Um, however, the New Testament, you have Jesus when they bring a woman to him to be stoned because she was caught in adultery. He doesn't encourage them to stone her. He says, well, he says, any of you who haven't sinned, throw the first stone. And they're all, <laughs> all sins. So no one was there to condemn her. And he, says, he looks at her and says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Um, and he brings the new gospel, which isn't liberal. It isn't do what you want. That's what, not what the gospel's about. It's about a, a, a appealing to an even higher sense of duty, honour, love, faith, charity. Um, so, yes, I believe in God. I believe in the Bible and I believe in Jesus Christ. There, you know, uh, when I compare Jesus to someone like uh, the prophet Muhammad, I don't believe God, if he wanted to redeem the world, would send some guy in the desert who marries six-year-old children and has sex with her maybe when she was nine or ten. I don't believe that's a revelation of God's love. I don't believe that's who God would send. I don't believe God would then want him to go on a conquest where he to try and conquer vast sections let the go uh, raping and pillaging and all the rest of it. I look at the uh, Muslim religion, and yes, I have read about it. I understand the pillars of Islam, the need for a daily prayer, the need for the Hajj, for pilgrimage, uh, the need for charity, for giving of alms, um, the uh, fasting in the month of Ramadan, and there's other pillars of Islam, which basically, if you keep all these pillars of Islam, you, you're considered a, a good Muslim. But it, it's a, to me, it's a works-based religion, not a faith-based religion. And I don't believe you can work yourself into salvation. Um, God doesn't expect us to work our, our way into salvation. It can only ever come as a gift. It can only ever uh, be given as, <coughs> as a gift. And you can choose to accept that gift, or you can choose to reject that gift. It's that simple. <coughs> you can have a faith, which is belief, trust, sometimes in the unknown. Um, or you can not, because I believe in... Uh, God as a creator, I don't believe in evolution. Some scientists go, oh, that's crazy, evolution is proven. Well, one, not all scientists agree with that. And even scientists who do believe in evolution can't all agree on how it happened. They have massive arguments with each other. So to try and say it's a fact, you know, even those who believe it's a fact have arguments with each other about exactly how it occurs. Myself, I don't see um, evolution outside the kind. I see lots of different birds, and within a particular genus, there's a huge variety. We have a huge variety of dogs, but they're still dogs. Um, well, this is going to be a massive YouTube video. It's going to take forever to uh, load up, and maybe one or two people will listen to it. I don't have thousands of viewers, but... Um, I'll put it out there for those who, if it, if it does nothing more than makes you think, that's fine. 
I'm not here to convert you. I don't believe it's my job to convince you. It's the uh, Holy Spirit's job. It's not mine. I, I, I can't do anything. If, if you're an atheist, at least maybe it thinks and makes you uh, think about why you're an atheist and better justified in your own mind. Um, ultimately, I believe in free choice. God has given us the ability of free choice. You can choose to uh, do what you want. Um, I believe that also has consequences. If I choose to put my hand on a hot stove, I'm going to burn my hand. Um, but, so, yes, I believe in God. Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. Yes, I believe that the Bible represents His divine inspired word. And that's how I, I run my life. And I don't unashamedly say um, everything in my life revolves around that. I believe God's the creator. Um, I believe by uh, following this Bible, I have a better life now. Not even just waiting for heaven. That, that's not even, just even now. I have a better life because I'm a Christian. And I think uh, if you look at nations that have adopted Christian principles, they are better nations. Um, nations that operate on other principles, you know, uh, <coughs> suffer the consequences of choosing to be, uh, not follow certain uh, principles about freedom, about, um, about treating others right. Without doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. Um, if you've got any comments, put them down below. If you're an atheist, feel free to uh, put a video in response on why you're an atheist. You might believe because there's so much suffering in the world that uh, God would be an asshole, That he hasn't stopped it yet. Um, I believe God, in having to allow free choice, has to allow its consequences. Um, he does, however, have a plan, and that suffering isn't going to go on forever. Um, I don't believe hell is uh, where people are going to be tortured forever and ever. God doesn't believe in Guantanamo Bay where people are locked up forever and ever just to uh, be punished. He does speak about hell being a permanent extinguishment that people, uh, you know, uh, people aren't going to want to live in a universe run on a principle of love. Some people are going to, to them that would be torture. So rather than being a sick God that allows torture, That'll be it. They'll just be wiped out and remembered no more, as the Bible says. Um, so, a truly loving God um, gives them their wish. They don't want to be part of it, so they aren't part of it. Um, these Christians who say that uh, God's going to burn people for billions of years, the Bible doesn't tell that, and that's a that's a really screwed understanding. That comes from Greek philosophy. That does not come from the Bible. And those who say it don't need to go back and study their Bible better. Um, they're using a parable, which is a story of Lazarus. Um, it's not to say uh, there's no judgment whatsoever. I believe some people are going to suffer a lot more when the final judgment comes. Um, but... Ois tonai anos, or forever and ever, or into the ages, or literally into the eons, um, means that it's finalised. Like it says, Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed with eternal hellfire. Well, it doesn't mean eternal in the fact that Sodom and Gomorrah are still burning today. Okay, because we know they were near the Red Sea, and you don't go to the Red Sea and see this fire still burning. Um, eternal hellfire means the consequences are eternal. Um... And uh, Christians who, uh, you know, and Catholics who talk about purgatory or eternal people burning forever and ever, that no wonder they've made some people turn off Christianity. What a sick, sick way to look at uh, God, a loving God. Um, that's why I believe in God. 
feel free to put your comments below. I'm going to have to finish up now, otherwise this is going to take a day just to load up into YouTube. If you've come this far, thanks for listening. Um, feel free to put your own responses down there or a video response. I will not edit anything you say. If you want to say you, the brain team is obviously uh, uh, screwing up your thought processes, <laughs> go right ahead. Um, Uh, that's the end of uh, my testimony. We'll end it there. Thanks for watching.